Hello guys and welcome to a new Stir Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. In this video I have for you a preview of Unternehmen Rosselsprung, a new division available in the upcoming Raid on Dravar Nemesis DLC. As a disclaimer, Eugen has given me free access to the DLC, so big thanks to them. Also, please remember that this was recorded on a preview build, so what you see may be subject to change. Uh, feel free to read the description on the right hand side and pause the video if you want to do so. Uh, but for now, we're going to be jumping straight on in. We're going to go through all of the units and put together a quick deck. So let's start in the recon tab. So first off, we have the uh, Doyav Nitsa, I think, something like that. Um, <laughs> I'm going to try my best again with the pronunciations today, because there are some like Croatian units that <laughs> are probably going to get wrong. Uh, but either way, these guys have a pretty nice setup here. They are a 10-point disheartened recon squad, which is quite interesting. We don't ha often see recon squads that are disheartened. And what's nice about Disheartened Squad is it will automatically fall back if it comes under fire, right? If it gets pinned down at least. So if there's like stray artillery landing near your recon, they might automatically move back away from that position. Now this could be both good and bad because one, they're not going to move back to where they were. So you would lose the line of sight that you thought you had. Uh, but also it could be a good thing because obviously your, your infantry automatically kind of saves its own life, um, which is nice. And like that's sometimes why disheartened infantry is very useful because you can consistently attack an area and then whenever they take too much damage, they just run away again. And that's fine because um, it allows them to move backwards and forwards multiple times, revealing the enemy units for your support weapons to kill. In this case, it's obviously different because the recon squad is going to be hidden somewhere where it can do its own recon anyway. But yeah, four-man recon squad with this hardened trait, exceptional stealth, very high optics, 10 points, pretty nice. Only thing that I would say is bad about it is pretty low availability for 10-point squads, uh, only 4, 8, and 12 in each phase. I mean, in the later phases might be more worth it, but early on, probably not. Then there's the KFZ-4, which is a truck that appears in a few other divisions already. I always wish that this dual MG-34 could actually fire an aircraft, because it does have an aircraft sight on it. But yeah, standard little truck there with the very high optics, but only medium stealth. And then we have the first of the SS Gebirgs uniforms with the SS Gebirgs Aufklader. Uh, these guys are your standard two-man Aftada squad. They can be brought in with the BMW, the Kubel, and the Kubel MG. So you can get that second command, or sorry, recon unit if you want it, which does have the very high optics there as well. Moving on, we have the Aftada Panzer II F, um, your standard 20mm Panzer II. It's a nice infantry support tank, and with recon, it can spot its own targets. So a pretty good unit, to be honest. I like it a lot. Then there's the Brandenburger Aufklader. These are a four-man MP44 squad with the smoke grenades and radio capability. You get three of them in phase A at two-star veterancy. So those MP44s are going to do a decent chunk of damage at range and with that extra veterancy, improving the accuracy on those guns. But yeah, I'm, I'm a good... I'm a big fan of these. I think they're okay. Uh, I just think, again, availability might be a problem for recon. Uh, then there's the AB41s. So there's two variants. There is the German variant and there is the Croatian variant. So the Croatian flag being put on there or the symbol. Uh, very cool indeed, that shield. I like it a lot. Uh, also on the front there, there's a little symbol as well. Now the difference between the two is the Croatian one can be brought in phase A only and the German one can be brought in phase A and B. And in A you get 6 and in B you get 12. Uh, these are really good 20mm fire support vehicles with recon capability. Then there's the SS Gebirgs Fusilier. These guys have 4 MP40s, 3 Car 98s, the MG26 and a sniper, the car 98 with the scope. For a nine man recon squad, these are okay. 
Uh, they have the exceptional stealth and very high optics. I think the MG could be better. You know, if it was like an MG34 or an MG42, that this would make the squad really, really nice. But since this is an MG26, it's a bit lackluster. But for a, you know, nine-man sniper squad, that's basically what they are. Not too bad. Uh, then we have the Chetniks. So, nice flavor squad here, the Chetniks. For 35 points, a bit overpriced in my opinion. Uh, it is a 15-man squad, mind you. It does have three Stens, the 11 M24s, and the MG26. So, yeah, it is 15-man, but the weapons kind of suck. And you're not really going to ever be doing too much damage with these, uh, even though you have a lot of dudes. Uh, the only benefit of these over other infantry squads is that they're going to survive a hell of a lot longer <laughs> because there's more men. But 35 points, you get 3 in A, 6 in B, and 9 in C. Then we have the Fauschen Brandenburger Aufklader. These are actually a really nice squad. Six-man sniper squad with uh, radio and the exceptional stealth. They're nice, but they lack on availability. Again... Uh, so 2, 4, and 6 availability because they're forced to come in at 2-star veterancy. Uh, the veterancy is not going to really help too much with their damage or anything. So, yeah. Unfortunate that you're probably not going to see these too often, but otherwise pretty cool squad. Uh, there is the SBW AB43 in here as well, uh, which is nice. It has the 47mm gun on top. Now, you could potentially ambush enemy vehicles with these um, because they do have 70 mils of penetration which is enough to get through the side armor of a medium tank but yeah I don't know otherwise it has limited use maybe at the start you could transport sniper a couple of things with it um, but just a nice sort of interesting different unit I guess than we've seen already like obviously we have the AB41 but we've, I don't think we've ever seen the AB43 in the game before that's new uh, let's move on to the infantry tab. So first of all, the Domobrani. These are an eight-man disheartened squad. They have Bretta, uh, the M24, and the MG26. And the Bretta is a nice SMG, uh, so it is going to make them do a little bit of damage at sort of like the 150-meter range. Uh, it's it's going to be quite nice. But, you know, 20 points for an eight-man disheartened squad... Not a massive fan. Let's move on to the Grenadiers. These are standard. We've seen them before. MP40, 7 car 98s, MG34 with Panzerfaust. Um, 8 available in A, 16 available in B. Nothing too new there. Uh, this, however, is a new squad. The Cadetten. These guys are available in A and B. 9 and 18 availability. Quite a lot of availability, especially in B. The fact that these are fanatical kind of makes them an interesting squad for dotting around at close range. Like, for 20 points, I feel like you could probably do a decent chunk of damage to enemy forces if you just, like, dot these around in, in towns or in, like, heavy cover. But, and then, like, when a unwitting Storoki squad walks past, it just gets absolutely eaten alive by the number of SMGs these guys have. Like these will lose against pretty much any specialized close range infantry, but they will beat any infantry that is not specialized for close range combat, like Starkey. So, yeah, I, I don't, I kind of want to try these out. I feel like they they might be alright. Then we have the Croatian Legionnaires. These guys are basically Grenadiers without the Panzerfaust. Uh, so yeah. Same exact weapon layout. Uh, they are Croatian, however, and do have the Croatian uniforms, which is cool. Uh, they have 9 available in A, 18 in B, and 27 in C, so slightly more availability on these compared to the Grenadiers with Panzerfaust. Uh, then there is the Croatian Legionnaire Führer, so your, your standard leader. Uh, these are actually quite nice. Smoke grenade, radio... Four MP40s, so they don't reveal themselves at range. Like, yeah, pretty good standard leader squad, actually. Not bad at all. Then there's the standard 
SS Gebirgsjäger squads. Now, for an 11 man squad that's like supposed to be super elite, their weapons kind of suck. Um, they've got an MP40, 9 car 98s, and an MG26. Uh, but the availability is good on the cards. So 12 available in A, 24 in B, and 32 in C. They get the AT grenade. But yeah, other than looking cool, I feel like these are going to kind of suck. <laughs> but at least you can get a lot of them. Uh, then there's the Ustash. These are a 12-man squad. Uh, you get pretty much a similar you know, rifle machine gun layout, this being the Carcano and the Breda, but you get the extra uh, MP40 there. So you do a little bit damage at close range. But otherwise, you know, compared to the SS Kabuksjäger, uh, these are basically exactly the same. Just one extra dude. Uh, and no AT. You get 9 in A, 15 in B, and 27 in C. Uh, then there's the Kosakan Pioneer. Interesting unit. Has the three submachine guns there. The PPSH. The M27s. Got four of those and a DP-28, also the close range HE. Now these, you can get 5, 10 and 15, but they suffer from the same problem that I've mentioned before with 8-man um, Pioneer squads. They die very fast to enemy HE bundle grenades and TNT. Uh, so yeah, I'm not entirely convinced that this is the best unit to be choosing here. But it's okay, because we have access to the Croatian Pioneers. And these Croatian Pioneers are actually pretty cool. Um, they have a new unique weapon, the Irma EMP, which is a submachine gun. Uh, and it's actually modelled into the game, as you can see there. So that's really, really awesome. These actually do slightly more damage than like an MP40, because they have extra accuracy. Uh, kind of similar to the Thompson. Uh, so they got like 0.4 damage each and then 60% accuracy at 100 meter range. Uh, which actually goes pretty well uh, with the fact that they are a 10 man HE close range squad. So yeah, much, much better in my opinion than the Kasakan Pioneer for the same price. Uh, you can get 5 of these in A and 10 of them in B. Next up, the SS Fauschenführer. Uh, the SS Fauschenführer is actually a really awesome leader um, here. It's got one vet, um, three available in A. Now, its weapons, you know, aren't great, like three MP40s, three G43s, like, yeah, who cares? But they do have smoke, they do have radio capability, and they're fanatical, and they have the raider trait. So they get exceptional stealth, they're fanatical, so they don't surrender, and yeah. That's great, because the, the the lovely thing about specifically a fanatical leader is that if that can't be surrendered, nothing else around it that's close enough to it can also be surrendered, I think. Um, so yeah, that's very cool. Although I think things can still be potentially surrendered if this is pinned down, maybe? I don't know. I'm Maybe I'm overthinking it. Regardless, it's a nice leader squad. <laughs> with the smoke and with the radio and the fact you get three of them uh, as compared to the Brandenburger Führer which you can only get two of them in phase A and four of them in phase B uh, you get two MP40s and four MP44s which is actually quite a nice sort of close range engagement DPS honestly um, plus an AT grenade I prefer a smoke grenade generally on leaders um, and then they get the radio and the Raider trait with the exceptional stealth. Then there's the Brandenburger Pioneer, which is an eight-man double flamethrower squad, which is actually really nice. I think the only other eight-man double flamethrower squad is the Stomaviki Rocks. So, comparative to them. And it's actually quite nice because you're not forced to bring these in at two-star vets. You can get actually five in A and ten in B. So, yeah, really decent close-range flamethrower squad uh, for 30 points. Then there's the Brandenburger, uh, which are also very nice squads. We've seen these before in Verteidigungsbereich Talon. Um, they get the four MP40s, the six G43s, and then two MG43s. 
MG42s. MG42s are so much better in this game than MG34s. And yeah, that means that they are really good at close range because they get the bundle grenade and they're also good at long range because they get the MG42s. So yeah, very nice squads. They're coming at two star veterancy. Um, you get four in A, eight in B and 12 in C. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to justify the availability on these, but they are really good squads. Uh, then there's the SS Falschmjäger. They're probably thinking, oh, no, not Falschmjäger as well in this squad. That's crazy. Well, these Falschmjäger kind of suck because they don't have a FG-42. Um, so they rely on four MP40s. They've got six Car 98s and two MG34s. They're still going to do a decent chunk of damage at range because of the dual MG34. Um, and they also have close range AT or close range HE, sorry. And you also get a lot of them. Um, so... Yeah, they're not as good at long range, but they are decent all-round infantry. Um, so as compared to like the third Falschmjäger and like the you know the other Falschmjäger that we have in the game already, they're but generally better at like the max range to like 500 meter range where they can use all of their weapons. Whereas these are very much like you can engage at long range if you want to, but you also have the capability to absolutely destroy things at close range. And you have good availability on them. So 9 available in A, 12 in B, and 18 in C. They get the fanatical traits, so they can't be surrendered. And they have the raider traits, so they get the extra stealth. Uh, yeah, pretty damn good squad. Um, just kind of lacking the, the premium weapons. Um, SS Gebirgsführer is a pretty nice leader squad. Um, you can get 3 of these in A, and 6 of them in B. They have two MP40s, a sniper, nine car 98s, and a granite boxer. So they can help deal with the sort of lighter armored targets, especially half tracks. Granite boxers are really nice at taking out half tracks. Um, yeah, so they come with radio, 12 man squad with radio trait means they get the extra stealth. I think the SS Kabuks Fido is actually really good. Then there's the. SS Gebirg's Pioneer, which is a 15-man raider squad uh, with a jerry can bomb. Now, I think the jerry can bombs, or there is another unit that already has a jerry can bomb. It's okay. It's just kind of like a Molotov that does a little bit more damage. I'm not entirely convinced how good these are going to be for 30 points. They get in the MP28. And then 13 car 98s and then the MG26. I guess they're going to be able to use the automatic rifle at close range, but I just think these are going to get outclassed. They're just going to get pinned down by like other units that are close range uh, specific. So yeah, I think that they're going to struggle a little bit. Uh, next to that, we have the SS Gebirgs Pioneer Führer. Uh, these are another nice squad of leaders. Um, nine strength, they get smoke, they also get HE at close range, and they get the radio trait. So, yeah, very, very nice. Then we have the SS Geburg Strafer. These guys have three MP40s, eight G43s, and an MG34 with a Panzerfaust. Get four of them in A, eight of them in B at one vet. For a 12 man squad, their weapon layout is a bit weird. I'd rather they have like a second MG34 and they'd be much better. Uh, but yeah, I guess they're not too bad. At close ranges, you're still going to be doing like 2.4 damage, but so get a bit of extra veterancy on these, and these will probably do quite a bit of damage. And finally, there is the SS Fausch Mustosch Jäger. Uh, these are an eight man. MP40 squad. This is very much a work in progress uh, unit, by the way. They have currently AT grenade smoke, fanatical trait, raider. They're going to have exceptional stealth. They can't be surrendered. Six available in A, nine available in B at the moment. But yeah, I think these are still being worked on, so do bear that in mind. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, an interesting infantry tab. There's a lot to look at. A lot to look at. Between the Croatian units, uh, the SS Kabirks units, the Brandenburger units. It's crazy. So much stuff there. 
Moving on to the tank tab, it's pretty bare. I mean, it's, it's a lot like the other division, the Nov. Uh, they have Panzer 35s. You can get 8 in A and 16 in B. So availability much more significant than the Yugoslavian counterparts. Then there's the M1542, uh, which is 6 available in A. 12 available in B. This has the 1,250 meter range, 70 mil penetration, just as a reminder. And uh, the HE shell's okay. It's got a double breader though, so it can pin down enemy infantry reasonably well. Um, at close range, you, you might be able to kill medium tanks with this. The Panzer 35 only really good against like half tracks. Uh, you can get a Croatian L6, uh, which has the 20 mil. It's pretty cool. Uh, 6 available in A, 12 available in B. There's the good old S35 available. You actually get 8 of these in Phase A, so that's not too bad. And then there's the leader variant as well there. You can get 2 of those. And the tanks are definitely lackluster. Your you know, maximum penetration is 70 millimeters, which is terrible. <laughs> in this game um, but yeah nice infantry support tanks at least moving on to the support tab Belgian Darmory are an option uh, no exciting transports for them but yeah 4 available in A 6 in B and 8 in C uh, there's also the L3731 you know the classic little tank here tankette <laughs> has a Operation markings on the side. You get six of these, I believe. Oh no, five of them in phase A. Uh, there is Kubel munition trucks. I do actually quite like Kubel munition trucks as supply because generally they are more useful than the Opel Blitz because it allows you to kind of like split your supply between units that need them rather than having to like drive the Opel Blitz backwards and forwards between units that need them. You can just kind of like split off a little bit of, of supply in different directions. So you, having two cars of these is yeah, very nice. Um, normally you only get one. Uh, but you get four in A and eight in B. And there's a Croatian crewed Schwalozer uh, as an MG team. Six available in A, 12 in B and 20 in C. We've seen these before, so I'm just going to move on. Um, there is the MG37 team here, which is a ZB53 technically. Um, Manned by the SS Gebirgsjäger. These guys have 6 availability in Phase A, 12 in B, and 18 in C. Pretty standard for MGs. Uh, then there's the MG34 squad. So this is uh, actually starting to get into territory of good MGs. Um, 6 available in A, 12 in B. The Croatians, not bad. But then the Brandenburger. They have an MG42, so they trump them all. Five available in A, ten available in B. Thirty-five point squad, uh, but they do have exceptional stealth, which for an MG42 squad is actually really nice. Uh, there's also the Gebirgs IG18, which is just the IG IG without the uh, the shield on it. Uh, so it has the same stats: two point two damage, one thousand five hundred meter range, with twelve round per minute rate of fire. Uh, same availability for 8 and 12, 35 points. Um, so yeah, standard stuff. Then there's the SS Fauschemjäger MG42 team. This is a fanatical Raider <laughs> MG42 team. So trumping even the Brandenburger in this case uh, with that extra trait there. Uh, again, 5 available in A and 10 available in B. Uh, Opel Blitz munition trucks are available. You can get three cards of these, two, four, and six availability in each phase. LG 42s are also available to this division, um, which is really nice. These are fantastic support weapons. They have the 2000 meter range with the 4.1 damage. Very, very nice uh, for taking out enemy support weapons and also just chipping infantry from a distance. So, yeah, very, very nice. I like LG 42s a lot. Um, then for commander options, you've got the commander on the motorcycle, the commandant, leader, like four-man squad, and then there's the auto protector, <laughs> which is the uh, <laughs> a very interesting-looking armored car. 
Yeah, in this case, it's the commander. There you go. All right, moving on to the anti-tank tab. We have Panzertrek teams. Uh, they are available in A and B. Four available in A, eight available in B. Um, they can be brought in with the motorcycle and the Kubel. Um, they do have the Raider trait with the exceptional stealth. Although I believe um, Panzertreks get exceptional stealth anyway, so yeah. Uh, but there you go, Panzer Treks are available. Then we have the Simavente, which is the 4732 uh, with the 47mm AT gun in it. So, yeah, 65 mils of penetration with 20 round per minute rate of fire. It's okay. <laughs> For 25 points, it's not bad. Uh, then we have the Pack 36 available in A, B, and C. Uh, six available in A for these, which is quite nice. I do like the Pack 37 for the heat, um, which allows it to be fired at like 750 meter range. Like, yeah, the accuracy sucks, but 180 mils of penetration. Oh boy. Yeah, if you ever have to deal with any heavy armor at close range, these can actually really do the job nicely. There is a card of Pack 38s available. They do come with the APCR shells, so that's nice. Um, they only have one star vet. But you can bring them in A and B. That's not too bad. And then there's a pack 40, which you can also choose to bring in A or B. And uh, yeah, three and five availability. So pretty standard stuff. Anti air, we've got the Geburgs Flak 38, which is your standard Flak 38 20 mil uh, without the shield. That's why it looks different. Uh, but it does have raid trait, so exceptional stealth there. Pretty cool. And standard availability, 6, 9, and 12. And then there's the Stier uh, 1500 drilling. This thing is kind of cool. Like, I like the look of it. But unfortunately, 15 mil HE kind of sucks at the moment. Like, in terms of AA, this is probably going to be tickling enemy aircraft, uh, unfortunately. So whilst it looks like a cool new unit, I don't think it's going to be terribly useful. And then there's a card of flak filling. The good old flak filling. Uh, quad, quad 20 mil. Standard stuff. Let's move on. Artillery tab. You have Beerbachter available. Your standard two man radio recon squads. Uh, there's Ballyfjörder. Your supplement artillery leaders. Two, four, and six availability. Everything's pretty much standard there. Uh, the, you can get access to the Geb G3675 mil, which is, you know, sort of like a kind of, I don't know, short range <laughs> howitzer that is okay. Uh, it can, if you have enough of them, they can smoke pretty well in the early game. That's why the one reason that I do like bringing these is because they do have a lot of smoke rounds, like just straight off the bat. Whereas if you were to bring in like an 81mm mortar, you only get like 15 smoke rounds. Whereas these are going to supply you with 35, which is a, a massive difference. Uh, but yeah, you can get 81mm mortars. Standard availability and stuff. There is the Geb H 105, uh, which is actually a pretty good artillery piece. Um, with the radio as well, so you can correct a shot. Um, 3, 6 and 9 availability of those. And then finally, you have the K35-105, which is probably one of the best 105mm howitzers in the game. Um, this comes in availability 2 in A, 4 in B, and 8 in C. And these can also be brought in with the multi-ammunition truck, so you can supply them with their own you know, supply, um, which is nice. But yeah, actually a really nice choice. Um, with radio, directed shot, these things do a good amount of damage. Right now let's look at the air tab and the air tab here is actually pretty cool um it's not necessarily good but it's cool uh, first of all we have the bh33e shs uh, which is a recon biplane which looks awesome it comes with six cluster he bombs which are terrible and two machine guns it only goes 245 kilometers per hour, has very bad resilience. <laughs> it's just a standard biplane with a little bit of a, I don't know, again, a tickle. It just tickles stuff. 
that's what it does. There is a Blenheim available. Uh, Recon Blenheim. Again, in Croatian colors. Uh, the 35 points. These Blenheims aren't too bad as Recon aircraft, honestly. Then there's the IK-2. Uh, you can get four of these in Phase A. They have a 20 mil and they have two 30 cows. They go 415 kilometers per hour speed uh, with exceptional agility. So, yeah. Interesting aircrafts, very unique. Apparently they're okay. I haven't actually had a chance to try them myself. Uh, then we have the G50. This thing looks bad all around. Like it's slower than the IK2. And it has worse armament. Like the two 12.7 mils is not that good. So yeah, I'm not too convinced that this is going to be any good at all. But it's cool that it's there. <laughs> the MS-406 is next, which does have a Hispano 20 mil and two 30 cals. Uh, it's a recon fighter, which is very nice. Um, you get four of these in A, seven in B, and ten in C. Like, I actually think that these could be pretty useful. Um, 490 speed is obviously a lot better than the IK-2's 415 km per hour speed, and you've pretty much got the same armament. So, yeah, I think these MS-406s are actually not too bad. Definitely going to be, like, the recon of choice if you're going to bring recon. Uh, then there's the C202 Folgor, which has the two 12.7 mil and two 7.7 mil machine guns. The machine guns aren't that great. You know, it's going to take a while to shoot something down in one of these, as compared to uh, the Veltro, which does have 20 mils. Uh, so yeah, Folgor looks nice. It's an awesome aircraft, but. The armament on this one is kind of trash. 75 points, 3 available in A, 6 available in C, B sorry, and then 9 available in C. Okay, next up we have the Libetio, which is a Italian made bomber, I assume. Um, it comes with 4 100 kilogram bombs and it's recon. I mean, it has bad resilience, but for a recon bomber in phase A, this could be pretty useful for like bombing convoys early on, potentially. No, it's not, it's not terrible. It can't really defend itself at all, but yeah, I'd be interested to try that out. I mean, there is the DO 17 E1. This thing has a wacky paint job. Check out that. Trying to hypnotize people with those propellers. Looks cool though. Two 250 kilogram bombs. Very good resilience. That's one thing that's really good about these DO 17s, but it is really slow. 300 kilometer per hour speed. So <laughs> there is going to be a lot of stuff that catches up to this. So you better have a decent AA net up if you're going to use them or a bunch of fighters. Then there's a J87 D3 which does come with the cluster armament. Uh, these are just one of the best cluster planes in the game. You can get three in phase A, four in B, and six in C. Then there's the Veltro, which does come with those two 20 mils. So much, much better armament. You can get two in A and four in B. You do obviously pay for the that armament with the lack of availability in comparison to the Folgor, but it's definitely worth it. Then there's J87s with the gun pods, with the nice uh, green paint job. One available in A, two in B, and four in C. And then finally, we have the DO17 KB1, uh, which is a bit faster, but has a terrible payload. Uh, with the 50 kilogram bombs like oh they're just so bad <laughs> uh, two available in a four and b and then finally we have a decent payload two 500 kilogram bombs one available in a four in b and six in c so 415 kilometers per hour speed with very good resilience is actually not too bad 
Uh, so yeah, these are definitely way better. And there you have it. That's all of the units. That was a lot to go through. It really was. Nothing exciting in the defense tab. So yeah. Now we're going to make a deck. Let's go into the recon tab. I think, first things first, I'm probably going to want both cards of these. You do get quite a lot of points to work with here because the cards are quite cheap. I'm going to bring in the Croatian AB-41s with the Alcala Panzer IIs and the AB-41s in Phase B. Then I'm going to want a couple of infantry squads. So I'm thinking potentially just having a bunch of these spam around in the late game. And then something else in the early game. And I could just do SS Kibirg Zafkala. Or we could do some SS Kibirg Fusilier. I might do that. We'll bring in the SS Kibirg Fusilier. And then in phase B. I am tempted to do the SS Kibirg Zafkala with the Kubel MG. Or the Doyav Itza. Let's bring in the Doyav. Because, yeah, I think I just want to kind of like keep the flavor in the deck. We'll do that. All right, let's move on to the infantry tab. So this one's going to be pretty hard because there's so many options here. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to bring in probably some Cadetan. I really want to try these in phase B. In terms of my leader, I'm thinking SS Kibirg's Pioneer Führer in phase A and then SS Kibirg's Führer in phase B. Because the other leaders, well actually the SS Russian Führer is also really good, but it doesn't have the HE, which I think would be pretty nice. Yeah, so we'll keep the SS Kibirg's Führer. Other than that, we're definitely bringing in the SS Fauschmjäger because these guys are baller. Uh, we'll do them in phase C. I may also bring in like Steiner Brandberger in phase C. Yeah, we'll do that. We need something for phase A. I'm thinking... Let's see... The Brandenburger Pioneer. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Bring those in phase A as close range infantry. Maybe I could bring in like a Brandenburger in phase A as well. And then we bring in some Croatian Legionnaires because we get like a decent number of them. Or some Gebirgsjäger, just like standard Gebirgsjäger. Yeah, just for the availability. I think that's fine. I'm not a massive fan of the Cadet in phase B in this build. I'm just not sure that that's the best option here. It'd probably be better to have something that could actually engage at range. Like the Grenadiers with Panzerfaust. Ah, but I just really want to try them. Maybe we could supplement leaders in the artillery tab. Let's bring in these Grenadiers. We're going to have so much face B availability, that's crazy. Alright, we'll just go with it for now. Uh, moving on, we have these boys we'll bring in. I'm not sure if I need the L6s because we have so many AB41s. I think we can definitely skimp out on this tab. I'm going to bring in the Panzer R35, R35Rs just because you get so many of them. And dotting these around could probably be very useful for just helping pin down infantry and um, killing off half tracks in the mid game. I'll also bring in those M15s in phase B. 
Alright, support tab. We're probably going to go for infantry commandant. Although this thing's kind of funny. And we're going to go for the commandant infantry. I am going to bring in LGs. I think they're definitely worth bringing. Which phase though? I'm not sure. We have a lot to bring in in phase B already. Maybe what I could do with these Godithan is actually up upvet them. Or if that's a good idea. But availability is already too much there. I could maybe do like a phase C with these LGs because they are just so good. And having that many of them would be really nice. I'm going to bring in the SS Falchion Jaeger MG. I think we'll bring that in phase A. Help support. And then I'm going to leave the rest of this tab for now because we're probably going to need some form of supply. All right. In this tab, I think going for the Panzerex are a good idea. Do I want them in A, B? Probably in A. We'll do those in A and then we'll do this in B. Anti air. I'm going to want probably black fillings in B and then I'm going to do. Black 38 20 mils in C. And we're going to have to rely on fighters in phase A, I think. Definitely bringing in these boys with the multi munitions. Early on, I think I'm going to use the Gibbs. We're going to supplement leaders. And then we move on to the air tab. So, definitely want the Veltros. We'll use MS 406s in phase A. I kind of want to try out the IK2. Definitely going to bring in the bombers though. Yep, those bombers are good. I'm going to bring in the JWD 73s in phase A. We have five points left. I probably want one more card in the air tab. I am super tempted to try out these IKTs. <laughs> but I think the J87 is the better choice. I'm not sure if in phase C is a good idea because I'm not actually going to be able to bring them in if the enemy has, you know, got a lot of AA. I think it's fine. I guess the other thing we, we could do here is just bring in some phase A Opal Blitz the Gebs. And maybe I bring in phase B. Phase B supply as well. I mean, these do have a lot of ammo, so maybe I don't need it. The only thing I have noticed is that those don't have smoke, so that is a little bit skeptical. Not having smoke support from your artillery is kind of iffy, especially on a division that relies quite heavily on infantry yeah I don't know this kind of looks dodge <laughs> I think I said that about the last one as well but um, yeah it's going to be a very difficult deck to play again in smaller team games and 1v1 but it will definitely be fun to play in 10v10 I'm not entirely sure I built it right. I think it's going to take a lot of adjustment to get this right. But it's looking very much like a more of a Vanguard Maverick deck than a balanced deck. I've kind of forced it into balanced. 
because that's most of the game modes I play uh, use balanced deployment type more like 3v3, 4v4, 10v10 I mean ideally in a 10v10 you probably want to be using Juggernaut but um, yeah balanced is good in general for team games hmm like I like the flavor in the deck but in terms of actually looking at the deck as a playable division, it's kind of difficult to see where your power is going to come from. Like what you can do with the division to make a good push like early on, for example. Like you might be able to play around your infantry to make it work. But it's going to be kind of difficult. Yeah. Hmm. We'll see. Well, that's it for now. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed uh, this look at both of the divisions from the upcoming raid on Dravar Nemesis DLC. Uh, I don't believe there's a release date yet, so you guys are just going to have to wait and see on that. Um, you will you will know when I when I know, basically. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys have enjoyed the uh, preview of both of the divisions. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.